Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka Mono Blue Tron, back with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. So the reason my videos have been so sporadic recently is because I finally found a temporary job wrapping presents for minimum wage. Um, so I figured what better way to celebrate my newfound employment as well as the start of the holiday season than by testing out one of my favorite cards of all time, Box of Friends. We've jammed this sucker into a Metaphos shell and we're gonna see what happens. Let's jump into Deck Edit and I'll show you what I'm playing. So this is the list we settled on. Now right off the bat you can see there's some stuff in here that'll land you straight on the naughty list. So I'll give you sort of an overview of what I want the deck to do followed by a card by card breakdown. First, let's talk about Metaphos. Now as I'm sure you know, Metaphos is an archetype of normal pendulum monsters that have no effect in the monster card zone, but you pop them in your scales and suddenly you can target one face up card you control, destroy it, and then set a Metaphos spell or trap directly from your deck. Now this archetype has been competitive basically since since it was released, the original iteration of the deck was a very slow, grindy, quaking mirror force style of gameplay. Uh, it accrued advantage with repeated combination activations, tons of counters, and pendulum summonings every turn, which eventually made a wall of advantage that your opponent could no longer get through. Now, as the meta sped up, it became clear that they needed a way to fight back, and the dominant form of this deck became Magispector Metaphos. This deck tries to accrue advantage by reusing Archfiend Eccentric, but also has space for things like Magispector Bunbuku, and most importantly, Magispector Kirin so it can blow out and kill your opponent. I'm playing something a little different than that, and the difference is one of my favorite cards of all time, Box of Friends. Now, in case you don't know, Box of Friends is a 0-0 machine type monster that if it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you get to special summon two normal monsters with different names from your deck whose attack or defense is zero in face-up defense position. Now, you can get this effect by popping it with any Metaphos card, but the monsters you get can't be used for a Synchro Summon. However, they can be used to Special Summon a Synchro Monster, if you are a couple steps ahead of me right here. Um, we have two Box of Friends packages. The first is Cyframe Driver and Labradorite Dragon. These two make Ultimaya Zulkin, a Synchro Monster that does not get Synchro Summoned. Uh, this is one of the best decks for Zulkin. Um, even the Magic Spectre Metaphos decks are playing Gofu and then going into Adamantite and then making Ultimaya that way. I mean, it just makes sense in Metaphos. They set cards by using their effects, so you're never in that weird, awkward Zulkin stage where you don't have anything to put face down, so you can't use his effect, so going into him is kind of a bust. The other Box of Friends package we have is Master Pendulum, the Draco Slayer, and Metaphos Steelerin. It's uh, obviously slightly less ideal, but does in fact make Dinoster Power, which is maybe good enough? This is basically just for a world in which we draw one half of these two and don't have a way to pendulum summon it out. Routinely, we can do it anyway, but just in case. Um, so that's the deck. The main plan is to make Zulkin turn one. The backup plan is to just play Metaphos, which is a good deck in its own right. Let me walk you through the individual cards. We got three Box of Friends, the hallmark of the deck. Three Zombow Wow Wow. This is a card I was not sold on until I played with it. If it's destroyed uh, and sent to the graveyard, you get to special summon a basically a Box of Friends from your deck. Uh, it negates its effects and destroys it during the end phase, but since its effect activates in the graveyard, it doesn't really matter. If you have a Metaphos and then pop your on Bow Wow Wow, you can then play another Metaphos and pop your Box of Friends to basically engineer an Ultimaea that way. Uh, we then have our two box packages, along with three of every Metaphos, including Bizmagia, and one Rescue Rabbit. Uh, once we've already used our Box of Friends to get these two, Master Pendulum is basically a pretty dead draw in our deck, and Rescue Rabbit's pretty good anyway, so this is an easy way to make rank fours to ensure we have a gold driver at some point. I mean, I, I like what it does. Uh, we next have three painful decisions, really help smooth out those terrible draws that don't have enough uh, metaphos in them. Uh, also, I mean, like, this is just a busted card, why would they ever print it? One copy of One for One, this is our seventh copy of Box of Friends, which ensures we get it almost every opening hand. One fusion, two full fusion, one counter, and one combination. I never wanted to play more of these cards. Um, we're really only setting things our first turn anyway, uh, if we can't find our Ultimaea. 
two copies of Dimension Barrier. We really just needed another good trap, and to be honest, this is basically the best trap in the game right now, so here it is. Then we have the Solemn Suite, two strikes and a notice, or two strikes and a warning, rather. And then the actual best trap in the game, Mr. Vanity's Emptiness. In the extra deck, we have Aura Hulk, two Mithril, one Adamant, two Alakest, and a Dinoster Power, the uh, big boy Draco Slayer. Next, we have our Zulkin package. That is Zulkin plus Void Ogre plus Crystal Wing plus Scar Right plus Ignister Prominence, which I think we can make other ways too. Next, we have Rank 4s that I don't think we'll ever go into. That is Utopia, Utopia the Lightning, and Castell. So let's jump into the games and see if this deck is as consistent as it seems on paper. So for our first match, we're up against the worst deck in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! That's ABC. We've won the die roll, which in this matchup means we win the game. Um, we've opened pretty well. We have a one-for-one, one, a couple copies of Bismagia. We want to get one of their effects, another eight, and a way to get a one. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, we're going to start by getting the box of friends with this one-for-one. One. Uh, next, we're going to painful decision our way to a one scale. I'm going to get Gold Driver. Uh, after that, I'm going to Bismagia away this box of friends, playing this first because I intend to blow it up this turn. Um, this gets us the combination as well as the Labradorite and the Psyframe Driver, which immediately gets us the Ultimaya Zulkin. Now we're going to play Volflame, use Volflame's effect to destroy Bismagia, and then set a counter, which triggers Zulkin's effect, and allows us to get the one, the only, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. After that, we have Gold Driver and Volflame. I'm going to blow up Volflame for a fusion, and then during my end step, I'm going to use Bismagia's effect to get the other Volflame. So, we got ones, we got eights, we got ways to get both of them again. I feel pretty good about this game. He draws Max C, uh, the card you always want to see as your sixth card. Uh, he's going to just set two and pass. Got a solemn warning here, which is going to kind of screw up my plays, but not too badly. We're going to start with a combination. We'll blow that up to get full Metaphos Fusion. Uh, afterwards, since we set a card, Zulkin is going to special summon a monster. He max sees, and I go, oh god, I wish you'd had that last turn. We're going to get Void Ogre Dragon. Then we're going to special summon a billion cards, and he decides he has had enough. So it's pretty hard to open poorly with this deck, just because it's so consistent. Uh, however, it is very easy to get disrupted. This game we're playing against 52 card Burning Abyss. It's also got some PK stuff in there. It's got some Shadal stuff in there. I mean, just one of those we're playing everything that you could ever play in Burning Abyss, as well as maybe some Pots of Desires. Uh, we've opened pretty well. We have two eights, a way to get a one, and this hand represents a Zulkin, although we have to go about it in kind of a wonky sort of way. So he gets to go first. He's going to play Tour Guide, uh, use Tour Guide to get Skarm, and then immediately make Dante pick himself and hit three. Now, uh, real quick question to all of you who play Burning Abyss. Is it a good idea your first turn to use your Barbar effect to banish the Skarm that you're about to get a draw off of? I'm pretty sure it's not, but that 300 points of damage was probably worth it. What do I know? He's got a Twin Twister and a Fog Blade set. Uh, Twin Twister, basically the best card in the world against me. I'm going to go ahead and set scales because I want a Pendulum Summon first before I go destroying things. And here comes the Twin Twister. And all right, I mean, I don't feel terrible about this. I mean, I still have a way to pendulum summon. So we're going to go ahead and get an eight, uh, set these cards, and that's going to allow us to pendulum summon. However, he uses Beatrice. And I think, well, none of the Burning Abyss guys actually destroy spell or traps. So I don't know what she's going to really... Oh, there should all dragon. So suddenly one of my spells and traps is going to get destroyed. Um, I'm not feeling great now. Still going to use Steeler End to uh, activate Box of Friends' effect. He's going to Fog Blade. That's A-OK -okay with me. Um, I'm going to set this combination. That's actually the more important thing here, not getting the Box effect off, especially because the Box is not actually going to do anything because uh, of the way our draws worked out. So we have nothing on our board in a combination set. He's Burning Abyss. However, he's almost out of resources. He has a Dante attached, which is a little bit scary, except there's not a lot in his graveyard he can use. He draws a Skarm, which he immediately special summons so it can be destroyed by its own effect. Really, guys, re if you're playing BA, the first and only thing you got to do is read your cards. So he's going to start with Dante, get Skarm back. You should all be effect to draw a card, draws a Phantom Knights of Fogblade. Going to go ahead and summon that uh, of Silent Boots and then beat me over for 2700. Uh, really not the optimal turn for BAPK, but hey, what am I trying to say? Uh, we draw a Gold Driver, which is great, but you need to understand that we didn't actually have to draw it because we have a combination set, which we could just blow up and get a Gold Driver. Uh, we special summon about a billion cards from our extra 
Nature deck, as well as a Labradorite Dragon, which allows us to, after we pop this uh, one, the only combination, uh, go into some uh, busted ass dudes. We're going to get Ignister Prominence and then use his effect in order to send Beatrice back to the deck, one of our only ways of dealing with that problematic card. Uh, next, we are going to use Bismaga's effect in order to destroy Gold Driver, and he decides he does not want to sit through a Metaphose game. So in that last game, we drew well, but were disrupted every step of the way. This game, we've actually just bricked, and I had to play a lot of games in order to find one where I couldn't make Box of Friends, so you all better appreciate it. We're going to have to, unfortunately, just play Metaphos here, so let's just play Metaphos. We're going to start by using Gold Driver to blow up this Volflame, get ourselves a combination. Next, we're going to use this Volflame to blow up this Gold Driver, get ourselves a counter. Next, we're going to use this Silverbird to Pendulum Summon, like, two monsters and uh, then blow up this Volflame and get a fusion. Then we're gonna fusion our way into a Mithril. Probably Orhulk is just a little bit better here, but Mithril's my waifu, so I did have to make her. And then we're going to uh, draw Bismagia off of the fusion. You always want to make sure your Bismagia gets destroyed. This is one of the rare scenarios in which it doesn't actually happen, which sucks, but we do get to set basically every Metaphose card in our deck and pass back with a 2600 monster. He's going to use Red Eyes Insight and I go, oh god, am I really going to lose to Red Eyes? I don't have a way to destroy it because Solemn Strike only works if he activates the effect. I've set four, so maybe he'll play around it, but he's going to go ahead and draw a bunch of cards, then uh, hit me up. So once he activates the effect, I'm going to go ahead and Solemn Notice it uh, that destroys the Black Dragon Archfiend Man, which is good for me. Um, he sets a Rippling Mirror Force, and I, of course, don't play around it, because who plays around Mirror Forces in the year 2016? Uh, we're going to start by blowing up this combination and getting a one scale, then we're going to Pendulum Summon all of our monsters. I figure this plus the full Metaphose is lethal, so let's just go for it. He ripples, and I go, okay, wait, 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 wait. I can actually make a Metaphose guy in defense mode with my two big guys, and that prevents him from winning this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, uh, make this Rippling Mirror Force just a little less good. Uh, he's going to Red Eyes Insight his way into a Red Eyes Fusion once again. He's going to make Falling Meteor Black Dragon the better of the two fusion monsters, and immediately I'm going to say, no, 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 give me that with my instant speed Thousand Eyes Restrict. And he's going to play a Lure of Darkness, uh, send a Blackstone of Legend, draw a Maxi, and set a whole bunch of cards. So I'm feeling pretty good here, you know. I am um, I am in control, gonna special summon all the monsters in my hand and for my extra deck and start attacking. Remember, I have a full Metaphose fusion set, so I can still get in for lethal no matter what, which I will do here. He max sees in response and returns of red eyes, but of course you can't use that if you don't have a red eyes, and Mithriel's gonna get in for game. So, we're back with a deck. Um, I'll stand by what I said and claim that Box of Friends is a good card. I know it didn't show up that much in the on-camera games, but I did my best to show you what a brick hand looks like, what an interactive hand looks like, and not what three Zulkan hands that end up the same way look like. Trust me, the turn one Zulkan happened probably 70-80% to 80 of the games I played, and while that's super powerful, it's not very fun to watch or very informative. I would say this deck is incredibly strong and incredibly consistent. Obviously, Metaphos are strong and consistent, so it might not be adding a lot to the archetype, but I do believe the addition of Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon into this strategy gives it a bit of a power boost that it was otherwise lacking. I think Box of Friends is super, super good, and I think playing it plus Bow Wow Wow plus One for One means that there are almost no scenarios in which you will not find it. The availability of cards like Painful Choice mean that it is unlikely that you are not going to be able to pop Box of Friends or get Zulkan turn one, and even the cards that should be bricks, things like Drawing Labradorite, Drawing Cyframe Driver, aren't that bad. You're still able to Pendulum Summon them, which means there are ways in which you can go into Zulkan no matter what. All in all, I think this is a cool, refreshing take on the deck. I like it a lot, and I'll be trying it in the next couple of weeks. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed my miserable attempts at holiday humor. I hope you enjoyed watching another bad Metaphos player fuck up combos for the millionth time. And most of all, I hope you just enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give me a like, a comment, or a subscribe. It really helps me out. And if you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on Twitch intermittently at twitch.tv slash monobluetron. Links in the description. Finally, if there is a certain deck or archetype you want to see on another episode of this show, let me know in the comment section below and I will do my best to accommodate you. Otherwise, I will see you Wednesday.